Hello, this is Ken Ferry with this week's Boots in the Field report. Man, things are booking out there in the field this week. Finally, most of these beans locked up in the carbon penalty have broken loose and now they're taking off. Many early April planted cornfields are throwing out the tassel. For the pest team, let's be pulling whirls, watching tassels for aphids. So far in my travels, the coast has been clear from aphids, but as last year taught us, uh, or retaught us, I should say, that can change quick. Let's keep an eye on them non-GMO fields for corn borer as well. As we move into silking and pollinating, we need to keep an eye out there for the silk clippers. Right now, it's mainly Japanese beetle and the red-headed beetle, but the rootworm are going to join in here pretty soon. I see many fields that are going to pop tassels and pollinate in one big boom. Man, when pollination happens in that five to seven day period, we can usually stand a, even a normal load of silk clippers. If pollination gets dragged out over two weeks, then a light pollination or a population of silk clippers can be a problem. So kind of remember how these fields looked at knee high. If they were uniform, they're going to pollinate uniform. If they're ununiform, most likely, they're going to pollinate ununiform. So for whatever reason, this field looked rough at knee high. It's going to probably take 10 days, 2 weeks to get pollinated, and then a light amount of silk clippers can be a problem. Locally, though, I see a great foundation under this crop. I see a uniform stand with a high ear count potential. Yeah, my, my early April corn is a little lighter in ear count than my later April and May corn, but for all standards, this thing looks pretty big. One thing that does seem to be showing up in most fields that I've been in is more potassium deficiency than I would expect. You can see it on the lower leaves, but more important when I split these plants, I'm seeing it already in the third node from the bottom and we may be four leaves from tassel. Now because it's widespread north and south, it tells me it's more of an environmental thing than it is a per field thing. And I'm guessing dry conditions during the start of rapid growth um, may have caused it. And in some cases, rootless corn issues uh, may have also slowed this plant down a little bit and it cannibalized early. Now, it has evidence of a past deficiency. So in most cases, indicating the plant's back on track now. Now, I don't believe this will be a yield robber, but we will have to be on the lookout for standability this fall when we're doing our push test. On the bean front, most early planted beans are in R2 and some in R3. Looks like some really good pollination success there. Most of the fields are coming in or being are now ready for the fungicide application. On these fields, we're also entering that window, window where we need to be careful with our herbicide rescue applications. Get to that R3, you're going to knock some of these pods off. So make sure the weed problem is worth it. Is anybody else besides me fed up with this water amp control? Man, just coming through a lot of different programs. I am finally getting some reports of a lot better control of the second pass of Liberty. So conditions have changed that we're bringing down some pretty big birds, but what a frustration. Just be careful and stage those beans before you spray. Soybean disease pressure looks light in the fields that I've been in. I expect that to change now as the rows are starting to close. Some of the cornfields have experienced some pretty significant wind damage. While some have snapped, more have goosenecked. The gooseneck corn has straightened up the tops and it should pollinate in good shape. The yield loss should be minimal. Uh, for most hybrids, the L1 hybrids will be affected the most. These fields will need to be watched when it comes to harvest loss and most likely fungicides going to need to be done by the air. Now, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Tar spot. Getting several reports coming in of tar spot sightings. The tar spot app 
has been popping off new counties every day. This week, I found it in, uh, in the north in Woodford County and in the south in Scott County. Tar spot is on the bottom leaves, meaning it's homegrown tar spot. Finding tar spot the last week in June means that the plants were infected already by the second week in June. There's no way to sugarcoat this, guys. Tar spot showing up in June means we'll have hell to pay in August. If you remember locally, back in 2021, when tar spot showed up in June instead of August, we weren't sure what that meant at the time. By the end of September, anyone in Tar Spot Alley realized just how devastating this disease could be. Massive amounts of down corn, yield hits from 20 to 60 bushel. Northern Iowa saw something similar in 2022. Let's reveal a little bit about Tar Spot. Now, most leaf diseases are a problem because they destroy the leaf's surface and tear up your solar panels, your ability to make food. When managing low, most leaf diseases, we are most concerned about the leaves above the ear. Them are our money makers. We start scouting. We're looking one leaf below the ear leaf and we look up. We're looking for that disease lesion and the halos around it. Tar spot is a different bird than most diseases. Tar spot is parasitic in nature. When it infects the bottom leaves, it will pull nutrients away from the plant. So not only will it tear up the solar panels and damage the leaves, but it'll rob nutrients. It'll siphon nutrients off from the plant. As seen in past years, this will pull that plant down and eventually kill it prematurely. The plant will cannibalize itself, causing standability issues this fall. While I'm not so concerned about GLS on those lower leaves, tar spot is totally different. The fields in Woodford County were about four leaves from tassel with sporadic plants showing tar spot on the bottom leaves. The fields in Scott County were tasseling and showing tar spot on the bottom leaves. That tells us that tar spot infection is driven by environmental conditions not planting date. The fields in Woodford County had a very light pressure from other common diseases at this growth stage. Now the early planted corn in Scott County that was already pollinating was at threshold for GLS, northern and leaf light and eye spot uh, above the leaf, above the ear leaf. Now here at CropTech, our standard recommendation based on our fungicide trial timing studies is to wait for brown silk if disease pressure is not at threshold. You want more back-end horsepower for those D hybrids, those hybrids that make a big portion of their yield in kernel fill. Now if you're at threshold, spray the field, don't wait for brown silk. Every farmer needs to have a plan for how to handle the tar spot issue ahead of time. Now, our recommendation for the Scott County farm is to spray as soon as it's done pollinating, in this case next week. Spray the full meal deal after this tar spot with insecticide. So throw a hard punch at these fields because the tar spot and existing disease pressure is there. Then be ready to come back in 21 days with the second shot, if warranted, of a cheaper pass. There's where we throw the generics in, and that pass is to drive stability in your crop stand, so it'll stand up. And remember, we have 60 days to protect a fill. It's not a one-and-done deal. Remember what we learned in our past plots. The curative factor of fungicide only covers infections that have happened in the last 48 hours. Now for those fields in Woodford County, the recommendation is similar, but waiting for the field to pollinate before pulling the trigger because the field is not at threshold of other diseases above the ear leaf. 
again setting up a plan to spray again in 20 to 30 days and that'll be weather and disease progression related how does it happen so if we have a drought conditions that slow the disease progress we may not spray if we get the weather pattern to give us a big crop we most likely will need to spray I know in this market many of you are choking thinking about spraying once let alone twice if there is ever been a time for the pest team to be out scouting corn diseases this is it even if your pest team is me myself and I for the cautious guys out there thinking it ain't gonna happen fairy I am not spraying in a four dollar corn market this too is a plan but you need to prepare to go early with your harvest pre-book some dryer gas and look for pickup reels the good news is we're ahead of this and we have experience to fall back on we have time to react as this does or doesn't unfold remember this tar spot attack is coming from the bottom of the plant so that is where you need to look when scouting and that is where the fungicide needs to go so if you're going by air we need to narrow up the swath big droplets that are underneath the plane or the craft are the ones that penetrate that canopy now this goes for planes helicopters drones to make any difference how we're going there this is not the case for all diseases where in most cases we want as much of the fungicide to stay in the upper canopy when we're for instance dealing with GLS rust and other things and also when you ask an applicator to cut his swath width by a third it will come at an increased cost so be prepared but this will reduce the streaking issues we see when spraying tar spot from the air here is where we need to have that conversation with our suppliers if you plan to have them do it with ground rigs ground rigs can't cover the acres planes do thus they have their own spraying to get done that they had pre-planned before tar spot shows up remembering in 2021 growers were waiting two weeks or more to get covered if 2025 is a repeat of 2021 we'll need to go at this from multiple directions at the end of the day we need to prepare landlords and scout 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 this crop looks like a monster of a crop do not take your eyes off the ball here at crop tech the soil sampling crews are finishing up the wheat ground as the double crop beans are going in the research team is working every day to prepare for our field day and the farm journal corn soybean college those events have been approved for 13 ceu credits across four different categories so if you need some ceus great place to get them crop tech customers don't forget to rsv rsvp for the field day and corn college customers you can enroll on the website or call the office and the crew here will get you signed up the guys will be starting the virtual farm visits next week so if you haven't already signed up the fields let's get that done now this does not eliminate your need for scouting but it can help many of you have signed up for the high res program on summer tested fields our agronomists will be contacting you to set yields by zone so we can get your high res fertility recs written this weekend let's everyone take time and celebrate this wonderful country we get to farm in then come monday start addressing tar spot to stay up to date check out our website at croptechinc.com and subscribe to our podcast boots in the field report keep her safe keep her moving